Hello guys, welcome back. Now today I want to talk about the Colorado Avalanche and more, so most importantly, their amazing hot streak right now. They're going on a tear. So well in fact that they're two points behind a playoff spot in one of the most stacked divisions, not really of all time, but I'd say it's pretty stacked central division. Very hard to get in the playoffs, but the Colorado Avalanche are almost there and are almost about to achieve it. Their record is 24, 16, and 3. Not bad at all after them being like 16 and 16 not all that long ago. They were really, really in a weird spot there. And then they just crank out the 7-game winning streak, which is definitely one of the best things that could happen really ever. And being 6 in the Central, that's not really anything too, too terrible since the Central is probably the best division in the NHL. The Metropolitan has kind of fell back a little bit, but the Central has really been kept, just kept going. This this amazing streak of just being dominant, and it's uh, the Central is such a stacked division to even compete in. And Avalanche are there with a seven-game winning streak. That's very impressive. Get this, they've already passed their current totals from last season, their current point totals last season. They've already passed it, and it's about halfway through the season. They're going to blow that season out of the water, completely forget it, and they're doing fantastic, and they're doing an amazing job doing that after one of the most forgettable, well, I wouldn't say forgettable season because it was so bad that you couldn't forget about it. That was, like, a terrible year, and for a lot of guys, it was really motivation to have such a great year this year that they're playing really great all together and the team itself is banding together. Now the streak started when they faced Toronto and won 4-3 in overtime. That three goals, that three goals allowed in that one game was the most that they would allow in this current seven game winning streak. Three is the amount of goals and the current amount of goals that they would allow. That's the most that they would allow. They would only allow, they would allow less than or two or less goals for six more games and three goals would be the last one that they would allow. That is pretty ridiculous. That just shows how great your goaltending and your defense was throughout that streak. So they beat Toronto in overtime. They beat the Islanders 6-1. And, at, like, they're amazing at home. The Avalanche are fantastic at home. And I'd say that that's, that's key for their winning streak right now. They have they, all the seven-game winning streak. They've had six games at home. And while they're already great at home, they continue to be even better at home. And this this streak is definitely proving that. They're I want to say they're unbeatable at home, but they're similar to... Vegas and a lot of other teams that are great at home and they're continuing to get good good performances at home But even in a way they're not terrible uh, And then they have the game versus the Jets in overtime 3-2 they win that uh, Against a tough Jets squad there uh, against the Jackets. They beat them 0-2 after they were pretty I'll give them a, I'll give the Jackets a break there because Colorado were hot going into there and the the Jackets were really on a cold streak So we'll, we'll say that the Jackets were kind of on a weak point there um, versus the Wild, 7-2. They beat them. That that was a pretty great game. Um, I think Dubnik was in that. Uh, I haven't. I had him in fantasy in that night, so I kind of remember that very dearly to my heart, and it kind of sucks. Um, versus the Stars, they beat them 4-1 in the AAC. So that was on the away, and they played pretty well in that game. Versus the Ducks, which is this last game that they played, 1-3 um, over the Ducks. So the Ducks were pretty, pretty doing pretty well to start off or to go into that game and the Avalanche beat them. That's pretty dang impressive. But we just look at the goals allowed. Three goals versus Toronto, one versus the Islanders, one of the most potent offenses in the league, if not the most or the best offense in the league in the Islanders, they only allow one goal. Versus the Jets, two goals. That's a fantastic offensive squad. They only allowed two goals. Versus the Jackets, they're a bad, bad offensive squad. So shut out. It is still a shutout, but yeah, it's the Jackets. Um, versus the Wild, two goals. That is what it is. The Wild aren't great offensively. Uh, one goal for the Stars. The Stars are great offensively, so that's a, that's a plus for them. Um, versus the Ducks, one goal. The Ducks are very, very, very solid offensively, and they have some great depth there. So allowing them one to one goal, it's is pretty impressive. And only allowing three goals for the span, again, it's they've done fantastic defensively. Now we look at the league average and the Colorado Avalanche. Let's start with goals four. So scoring 141 for the Avalanche while the league average is 131. So they're scoring 10 more than the league average. That's pretty good to see on their parts. For goals against average, we have 125 for the Avalanche while the league average is 131. So they're scoring or they're allowing six less than the league average. That's good to see on their part. Again, they've been fantastic defensively in the past month um, for the power play. 20.93% uh, for the Avalanche, that's a pretty good power play, considering the league average is 19.35%. So a percentage above the league average, that's good to hear. That's good to see for their, for them. Um, the penalty kill, which has probably been one of their most best aspects of the past month, if not the whole year, 84% on the penalty kill. 
while the league average is eighty percent, they are doing fantastic on their end. When they have a when they are getting a penalty, they can don't have to worry about it as much as other teams because eighty four point or eighty point eighty four penalty kill is really, really good. And it's it shows that their strength is on the defense, considering that last season considering that the last season was abysmal defensively, that's so such improved that in one year that's kind of just ridiculous. They're fantastic on the penalty kill, while last year it was terrible. The defense on five on five was terrible, so the jump is pretty dang ridiculous. If you look at shot percentage, which I like to look at, the Avalanche are at 10.9%, almost 11%, which is really, really good for a team average. That's really good. While the league average is 9.1, so they're almost two percentages above league average. That's fantastic. This shows that the shot quality is better than most teams, and they're able to get some good shots. And if we look, not last but not least, in the save percentage, they have 9.13, which the league average is 9.13. So... The goaltending has been a lot better as of late, as it was pretty bad to start the season. And now they're playing really well. Um, both Bernier and Marlon Wall are playing a lot better. Um, Bernier has been on a, a heck of a tear. He's played fantastic, and um, and Varlamov has played solid, solid throughout the whole season. So they're looking really good on that aspect. Now let's get him through the top five on points and top five on course. Four percentage. In the top five points, McKinnon, who's having an amazing year, by 54 points. I think he's, t I think he's either tied for second or is like, uh, like a clear cut second in points in the league. That's amazing. Um, R Mika Ranson in 41 points. He's having a fantastic year as he should. He's a fantastic player, and I always, uh, like he always turns into a beast in the NHL 18. But he's always had that makeup of becoming a great player, and he's finally realizing it this year. Um, Landis Gog, 33 points. Again, he's playing fantastic. He's playing great as a captain should, and Landis Gog has always been a great player, and he's continuing to do that. Um, Alex Kerfoot, 30 points. Now, when I, when I'm, what you're about to hear is going to be, I want to say startling, but it, it's going to be pretty surprising. Uh, Kerf, or not Kerfoot, but um, for Duchesne. Duchesne being traded was probably the best thing that's ever happened to Alex Ker Kerfoot ever. And probably better than when he was drafted. Like, you know, training Duchesne and giving Kerfoot the ice time available or needed to actually become a breakout player in this league, 30 points in about the halfway point, that's like 60 points on the year. That's fantastic. And Kerfoot has really shown that he's an NHL player, a fantastic one at that. He has a great shot, a great awareness for the puck, and he's done He's done fantastic, at least in the games that I've watched. He's played great, and Kerfoot really has gotten the opportunity, and he's realized it immensely. And Tyson Murray at number 5 with 25 seven points. Again, he's a great defenseman. Now we look at top 5 and course 4 percentage. Rantanen at 52.5%. Pretty dang decent. McKinnon at 51.6%, which you would which would, which you would predict. And Andrew Ghetto at 50.2%. Ugh, Montreal, you're not looking good on that trade, are you? Kidding. Uh, that was just a terrible trade by Montreal. And, and Colorado is definitely benefiting from that one. Um, number 4 is Zadarov, 49.8%. Um... If you only have three players above fifty percent on your team who are have actually a good amount of games played, eh, they aren't great on Corsi, so it is what it is. They're winning close games, so and Zadarov, I, I didn't really realize he would be that kind of a player who'd be okay of course four percentage. That that's a weird one. I didn't think that Zadarov was all that good, but apparently so. And Barbario. <laughs> I number number five, Barbario, fifty nine point five percent. I thought he was gonna be in the dumpster in Corsi four percentage, apparently not. Apparently he's playing pretty well decent, at least called Corsi, so I didn't really expect that. Barbario apparently having a pretty good season. Now for these stats, I I'm pretty sure they'll make the playoffs. I think it's not really a given, but I think they'll make it. I don't think they'll really slow down in the second half, considering that the first half they've really come out strong uh, to go into the second half. And they've really played well, and I think that they'll continue to play well. I think that they might actually make the playoffs, which would be great for Colorado, having one of the, almost a, like a, like a just an NHL worst season like imaginable. And then you come out and make the playoffs. That would just be magical, especially for Colorado Avalanche fans. They definitely deserve it. That's going to be it today, guys. If you guys did enjoy it. Make sure to like. If you guys really did enjoy it. Make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.